All right, let's go. Class. Yes. You can do better than that. Come on. Class. Yes. That's not bad. Not too bad. But you know what? It's like you guys are faking it on this because my second hour, which actually had a grand total of eight students when I started today's lesson, were, were like super enthused. And they were like super, uh, yeah, like, oh, we're here. And they're all know, but It's my discrete class. That's why. <laughs> discrete is actually harder. No, it's not. It's good. You was told it was easier, but the problem with it is every single. No, I'm listening to you. No, okay. Every single, every single example, every single problem is a word problem. Oh, I hate yeah, I hate word problems. And that's the what so got everyone almost yeah. seriously. If there's any problems, that's it right there. It's a word problem, and it's not really even a basic word problem. It's a complicated word problem where you have to try and figure it out by reading the information that's needed to get from that. So it's not fun. It's, it's out of, out of, I prefer trig. Are they popular? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason why I say I prefer trig, you actually get numbers. You get some word problems, but you get some basic formulas. Plug into the formula. That's all you gotta do. Plug into the formula. Every single problem is completely different in discrete. Okay because each one is a story problem and they're asking for different things the whole time. Yeah. Are more people passing in trig or in? Trig. I guess that makes sense. So, but again, you, you guys think that because you think it's a lower class that you think, you know, but it, that's the hardest part of it. Everything is word problems. So if you suck at doing word problems, that's not the place for you, okay? Now, let's go ahead and do this. So on example three, on example three, what's the first thing I should do on example three? Draw a triangle. So draw a triangle, and from there. Oh, wait, they did that. It's on the second one. Yeah, it's on the second one, but in the first one right here, it's not, because you have my slides, which are mostly done. So some of the stuff's already filled in for yours. So let's go A, B, C, big A. So that's my angle is. 43.5 degrees. Little a. What line segment is little a going to be? BC. BC. It's in between B and C. So I'm going to put 10.7 inches there. And little c, what line segment is little c? There it is. So it's going to be 7.2 inches. And it says solve the triangle. Solve the triangle. So when we're solving a triangle, that means I need all the sides and all the angles. So currently, I know two sides and one angle. So I need to find two angles and one more side. And let's take a look. The location of these. So I give you the A. Right, I give you the A. The next one, which is touching the A, the big A, is a side. And touching that side is also another side. Right? So don't be an angle side side. What type of problem is this? There's a special word for it. Oh. Ambiguous, right? It's ambiguous, remember. So if it's angle side side, that is ambiguous, right? Ambiguous. So you can have, like, enunciate differently and you still get the same thing. So it is ambiguous. So what do I have to do with any that are ambiguous? Find the angle. Kinda. What's, what's the problem with the ASS? We talked about it on Wednesday. Some people are looking. Some people are just like, please don't call on me. <laughs> what was the oh. big issue with the problems on Wednesday? Uh, the zero 
I, I, yeah, that's one of them. There could be a second triangle. There could be a second triangle. With the ambiguous case, when it's angle side side, there could be zero triangles, there could be one triangle, and there could be two triangles. So when we go and solve for this, I have to test for those. So whenever we have ambiguous, I have to test for that. So let's go ahead and start off first by solving for what? What do I have to solve for first? Solve for big C, right? I'm going to solve for big C right here because I have little c. And do I have a pair? Yeah. Which pair do I have? I have a pair of A's. Let's set that up. So it's going to be 10.7 over sine of 43.5 degrees is equal to 7.2 over sine of big C. Cross products here. Cross products, right? So I get 10.7 sine of C is equal to 7.2 times the sine of 43.5 degrees. What's happening to my sine C? Uh, it's multiplying, right? And so how do I undo that multiplication there? So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by what number? 10.7. Yeah, very good, 10.7. Oh. So sine of C is equal to 7.2 times the sine of 43.5 degrees divided by 10.7. Now that gives me sine C by itself. I'm not there yet, but I gotta get C by itself. So what am I gonna do? If I'm looking for the angle, I do the? Inverse. Thank you. So we're gonna do the inverse. So I get C is equal to inverse sine of 7.2 sine 43.5 degrees over 10.7. We plug this in our handy dandy calculator to find my value. I know y'all plug it in because I see people just staring at me awkwardly not picking up their calculator. Agashi, pick up the calculator. No, you're not. Yeah. Falling asleep on me. Twenty-seven point six. Okay. So we're gonna say that this, my C one is going to be 27.6. And now I'm going to test to see if this one is going to be OK. So we have this right here. Ah, I was supposed to delete that. Sorry. There we go. So whenever we do this to find out what C2 would be, because I gotta try and figure out if there's a second triangle here. I gotta try and figure out if there's a second triangle. What would be my steps to figure out this other angle here? One, very good. So 180 minus 180 minus my C1, which is? Yeah, there we go, 27.6 which is going to give me 152.4 degrees. That would be my C2, right? 
Now, so I'm looking for my second triangle here. So this is what I do to look for my second triangle. So my second triangle. I know, but because this is ambiguous, this is an example, and I'm telling you that whenever you see ASS, you're going to have what? It's possible of two. I know because that's the title of these notes. Doesn't that just mean that for the one, doesn't mean that? Oh, you know, it's also, if you look at the next slide, it gives you the value. So do I not need to do that because yeah. this, it's already on the notes? No. So to figure out the second triangle, all three angles in a triangle have to add up to what? 180. Very good. So to do that, my angle A, which is going to be my first triangle and second triangle, because that's given to me. My angle A, which was, what was that value? 43.5. So 43. 0.5 degrees plus angle B because I don't know B yet, right? But if there's a C2, then there's got to be a B2. B2 plus C2. C2. I'm going to put C2 and all those together are going to equal to 180 degrees. So I'm trying to set it up step by step because you're going to have to do these steps to figure out if there is a second triangle here. We do know what C2 is. So 43.5 degrees plus 42 plus 152.4 equals 180. Now, how would I figure out for B2? Wouldn't you do 180 minus? Minus, yes. 180 minus, yes. Um, would you also add 43.5 and then 52.4 and then subtract that value by 180? Yeah. Oh, uh, I would do 180 minus those. Okay. Because. Wouldn't that make it more complex? No. To add them and then minus? You, like how she said, like to add them together? Yeah, you could do that, but then you would have to have 180 minus the sum first. So, but if you're plugging the calculator, start like this, because there's a test to this. So, calculator would say 180 minus 43.5 degrees minus 152.4 degrees equals whatever my B2. So, if I do this correctly... If I do this correctly, if my answer is positive, there's a second triangle. If my answer is negative, there's no second triangle. It's negative what? Okay, so it says B2. I got four times. Point 0.9? Like that? I got 15.9. 15.9? .9? Okay, my bad. There you go. So it's negative 15.9 degrees. So by doing this the way I'm supposed to, I get a negative value. So because this is negative, there is no second triangle. There is no second triangle because this is negative. Yeah. So now that we know that, don't we have to still go back? To yeah, we still go back. We're trying to, because if there was two triangles, I would have to do both. I would have to solve everything in triangle one and solve everything in triangle two. So this just kind of makes that. This makes back. sure because if we have a, ASS, we have an ambiguous case, and then we might have a second triangle. But there's also the case that if it is ambiguous, we would have no, no triangle. And that's what we had on, what was it, example one? I think, so. I think so. It was example one that was no triangle. 
Do you guys remember? Yes? Maybe? Uh, wait. Because we got undefined when we plug it in the calculator. Um, it's almost like I make YouTube videos for people that wait, are not here. Uh, maybe, no, I think it might have been the homework. Yeah, no. I think it was homework. It was? Example one? No. I think it was the homework. Was it the homework? I think we did a homework problem that had it. Because I think you were showing Okay. Us. All right, so yeah. It's possible that you could have zero. So when you see undefined on there, that means there is zero triangles. You have no triangles there. So that just means you have all those three values and then you try and do it. Yeah, you try to do it, and when you get the angle, it's undefined. Oh, yeah, because then it, that's when it's too short, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, here yeah. it is right here. Yeah. It is example one. I'm not crazy. It is example one. So this is right here because when we did this right here, we ended up getting undefined. Oh. We got undefined for this, and because it's undefined, there is no triangle. I don't think we broke like the undefined part. I think we just we but here then we talked about it from the calculator, I think, yeah, I think right? We just moved on. Yeah, and, we got yeah. And that's what the example looks like because this piece isn't long enough to make a full triangle out of it. Okay. Uh, doesn't help that my big head's in the way. All right. So we're finishing up example three here, right? So we got 27.6. So we do have at least one triangle. We do have at least one triangle here. How would I solve for big B from the here? You need the two. Go ahead. Yes. Me? Yeah. Oh, uh, I would add both A and C. And then add A and C. And, then and take oh, it away from yeah. 180. So I would do the same thing I just did for that other one to find B2. So it's going to be 180 minus 43.5 minus 27.6, which is going to give me the value for big B. And what'd you get? 108.9. Very good. So big B here, 108.9 degrees. So we have all three angles now, don't we? Yeah. We have all three angles. Am I missing any sides? Yes. What am I missing? Little B. Little, little B. So let's go ahead and solve for that. And this is going to be just like 7.1's law of sine. I'm going to be solving from one of the sides here. So I start off with what I know again. So I got 10.7 over sine of 43.5 degrees is equal to little b over sine of, what do we say, 108? 0.9. Thank you. Pacho, didn't you say you can do either values when you have, uh, when you know both? Yeah. Okay. So it won't matter. It doesn't matter, but what if you made a mistake and instead of putting 43.5 here, you put 43.3, so your angle C was slightly different. So would that make this other one different too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always try to use the information that's given to me whenever yeah. possible. Yeah. Whenever possible, always go with what is given here. So from here, I know everyone's writing this down because you're doing the cross products here. Like the act of doing the cross products. This is actually key. Some people are trying to skip through all of this and they're not setting it up right because yes, there is a pattern to it. I'm okay if you figure out the pattern, but if you get it wrong because you didn't get, you really don't understand the pattern, you need to do the steps all the way to make sure you're right. So we should come up with, after we're done doing the pattern, little b is equal to 10.7 times the sine of, 
108.9 degrees divided by sine of 43.5 degrees. What'd you get? 14.7. And that's going to be, what are my units there? Inches. Very good. This one right here, 108.9 degrees. Now, does this meet all my requirements about a triangle? What do we know about the sides and the angles in a triangle? What about the biggest side equals biggest angle? Biggest side, biggest angle. Yeah. So the biggest side is B. Is my I'm I'm sorry, yeah. Biggest side is B, so is that my biggest angle? Yeah, it is. Smallest side, little c, right? And is that the smallest angle? Yeah. Yeah. So we're verifying that it is correct. I'm verifying that I'm putting everything in the right place. So that's key. There is little things that you could check yourself on to make sure that you are doing it correctly. Are, are we okay here still or no? So how about this? I'm gonna, before I do four, it's a word problem and we're gonna have to draw it. So before we do four, I'm gonna pause right here and we're gonna do like, let's say 10, 15 minutes of working on the assignment and then we'll come back and work on this, all right? Because some people are falling asleep on me. All righty, so we are continuing this up, and I am going to watch. Ah, there. There's no answer on the board right now, just so you know. So I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, there's no answer there. So yes, there was already an answer, but let's go ahead and take a look at what type of triangle we're going to have. So I'm going to draw a triangle because there's not one there. A, B, C, and it says little a is 26. Next one, little b is 31.3. And A, big A, is 104 degrees. Now, we're going to put this in plain English for example four. What did I tell you about the angles and the sides? Smallest goes with smallest, largest goes with largest, right? And there, there's kind of a limit on my angles in a triangle. So the angles in a triangle all add up to what number? 180, right? So let's see, right now, if I'm looking at this, I'm looking at A and little a. Because of this, big A is 104, but little a is 26.8. Down here, big B is I don't know yet, but little b is 31.3. By the information I gave you, the largest side has to go with the largest angle. Is little b larger than little a? Yeah, it is larger. So that means that angle a has to be greater than, I'm sorry, angle b right here has to be greater than angle a. But if it's greater than angle a, that means that it would have to be more than 104 degrees. But do I have a limit on triangles? Yeah, it could only go up to 180, right? So by doing that, just because of that, that right there, this cannot be a triangle because angle B has to be greater than angle A. And I cannot have 200 degree angles in a triangle. 
because if I go 104 plus 104, that's going to give me 208 degrees. And that is more than a triangle. There's no triangle there. And that's the reason why I started by teaching you guys that the largest angle goes with the largest side. The smallest angle goes with the smallest side. And so just because I know that little b is bigger than little a, that b has to be greater than a. And I can't have that because it's too much. If little a here is less than 90 degrees, it could probably work out. It could probably work out, but I would still have to have a value over here for uh, big C. But that's why this one's not going to be a triangle. Does that make sense? All right. Basic, yes, no, maybe. So that's my last example. So I wanted to finish that up so we could be working on the homework for the rest of the class, which is a good uh, 25 minutes left. So please don't just plan your phone. If you need help, speak up. I'll come around to you.